Good afternoon. Hello and welcome. My name is Mikhail Kuro and I am the host of this weekly video conference which we have entitled Monday Motivation. To remind some and to introduce to others, the goal of Monday Motivation is to provide a resource during these unprecedented times filled with anxiety and fear, physical distancing and economic hurdles in hopes of lifting your spirits. We want to provide you a place of virtual community where you can come each week to get a helpful hint, a nugget of inspiration, or a new technique to try to get you through this pandemic. This afternoon is already our sixth installment of Monday Motivation. And whether you have become a regular participant or are joining us for the first time, welcome. Thanks for connecting with us. I know that I eagerly look forward to this afternoon to hear familiar voices and to see friendly faces. We have specifically created Monday Motivation to offer you a weekly course of motivation for your mind, body, and spirit. Today, for the first time, we have a new person joining our team. I wish to introduce and welcome Janet Broadwell. Janet is a nurse and a nutritionist. Soon I will ask her to introduce herself more fully before she offers her first tip with us. Janet joins Pastor Dave Parker, the senior pastor of King of Kings, Lisa Bouvet, our mental health counselor and licensed therapist, and her husband, Mike Bouvet, our physical therapist. Now, before I turn things over to these special guests, let me please remind everyone that we want Monday Motivation to be interactive. That is, we want to hear from you. We want to know how you're doing, what you're doing to keep going. To encourage this, we will allow for questions between each speaker, as well as a time at the end for Q&A. For we're all in this together, and we will help each other to keep going to helpfully grow stronger, more closely united, to come out of this stronger in our ability to collectively and individually share God's love, God's grace, and God's forgiveness. Thank you for making the time in your day to join us. I pray that everyone is healthy and well, and please note that if you or any of your loved ones are suffering, we offer our condolences and support. Folks, unfortunately, are still getting infected, are still dying from this awful virus. Just yesterday, the brother-in-law of one of my wife's workers, her employees, died from COVID-19. If you must go out, stay safe, wear a mask and gloves. Do this, as Pastor Dave urged us in his sermon yesterday morning, to show care and love for others. Pastor Dave, thanks again for all of your leadership, for all of your support. What's on your mind today? Well, thank you, Mikhail. Um, so as Mikhail mentioned earlier, uh, we've entered into our 10th week of staying home to help protect ourselves, our own health, and the health of our neighbors. And I don't know about you, but I am seeing frustrations and struggles in our family dynamics very firsthand, especially with our boys. And uh, I know Kels and I uh, have been feeling it as well in our own relationship with one another, but also in how best to parent our boys who are feeling burnt out uh, from having to deal with each other every day without any kind of a break in between. So I did what every good pastor is supposed to do. I started by freaking out. Huh? <laughs> and after many deep breaths, I prayed, and then I opened my Bible. And it seemed like every set of verses that I came across uh, that focuses on relationships, they mention a couple of things. Uh, two in particular. Well, there's really three overall. I'm going to assume that we understand love, okay? Okay. Uh, but the other two are the ones that I want to focus on today. Uh, the first is patience. Patience in the midst of this pandemic, I think, is going to be key, right? So that can be one of our focuses this week, to give yourself and the people you are most interacting with 
uh, whether it's a spouse or your children, um, some leeway here. <laughs> I mean, nobody is happy about having to stay isolated. I know introverts that are itching right now, right? And so it's going to be important to remember that patience is going to be huge. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you find love is patient, love is kind. Uh, and again later in that chapter, love never gives up. I think that's part of patience. Uh, Ephesians 4, be patient, bearing, uh, bearing with one another in love. Uh, James chapter 1 says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and even slower to become angry right? That's patience. So I think what an opportunity this week to, uh, to develop our patience skills. And second, forgiveness. Whew, that's a big one. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Ephesians chapter 4 says, Be kind to one another, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you. So I think those are two, I don't know, for me they were life-giving uh, when, I, when I read those scriptures as our boys are bouncing off the walls today because we can't even get outside because it's raining, uh, like the flood. And, and so they're bouncing off the walls and, and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I need patience. And Lord, I need forgiveness. And we're doling out that forgiveness with our boys as well. We've had them start to sit on a couch. Anytime that two of them start yelling at each other or hitting each other, they have to sit on the love couch and eventually have to forgive one another and then say something nice about the other person. Before they can get off the couch and get back to whatever else that they want to do, they have to do those two things, uh, which I think is a great example of patience and forgiveness. I think when we take the time to be patient, especially before responding out of our frustrated emotions, when we can look beyond ourselves and forgive, then we can start to live into what Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 14, let us follow after, let, let us follow after things which make for peace and things by which we may build one another up, which is exactly what I think our relationships need these days more now than ever before, to find ways to build one another up. So be patient and forgiving as Jesus is with you, and just see with new eyes how it makes a difference in your relationships this week. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Thank Hi, my name is Janet Broadwell. I'm a nurse currently that works at Beaumont Health System. Um, I work in their private pay division. Um, which is different than regular home care. Regular home care uh, is paid through insurances. Uh, it's the home care that you get when you get discharged from the hospital and you need a nurse to come out and check your blood pressure, teach you about your medicines, um, change dressings, those kind of things. That's not what I do with my position. I go out and assess people's homes um, and their, their living situation. It's uh, I see a lot of elderly people, a lot of people with uh, chronic health history problems. Um, that need extra help in the home, say, for instance, with errands or house cleaning or um, their personal care, respite care. We do a lot of respite care for hospice patients. Um, so my role is, like I said, is to go out and do assessments. And then our caregivers, um, who have all been trained in the office, they are the ones that actually spend the majority of the time in the uh, clients' homes providing that personal care and errands and uh, house cleaning and, and those kind of things that I just described. Um, I really like my job. I like the one-on-one -on -one contact with people. Um, I formed some really good relationships with my, with my clients. And um, with them being elderly, um, they are a wealth of information, um, not only historically, but health information as well. Um, I've learned so much from them. Um, the, the people that I come across, I can see that living a healthy lifestyle is like putting money in the bank for when you get older. Um, I've also worked in a pediatrician's office for about five years, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and I've also worked in a substance abuse clinic, which I just, uh, about a month ago, two months ago, I just ended my employment there. Um, fortunately, 
they didn't need as many nurses as what they had. So um, my hours had gotten cut. And so I decided, well, this is a good time for me to step aside and uh, go another path. Well, didn't know that that other path was going to lead right into COVID. And um, with it being COVID and with my nursing job being non-medical per se at this point, I haven't been working that much, but I've been taking advantage of the time, just kind of uh, relaxing, reevaluating, and um, trying to live a li healthy lifestyle as much as I can. It's been a challenge with our diets. Um, here at home, I live with my husband and our one of our sons. We have four children who are now grown adults. By the way, we have two married sons, one that is living out in Rochester Hills, and one that lives here at home with us. Um, our youngest just turned 25, um, and our oldest is 34. And the ages in between, of course, 20, uh, let's see, 31 and 28. So um, that's a little bit about me. Uh, we live in Warren, Michigan. We've lived here, oh, 34 years now, almost. Uh, didn't plan on staying here this long, but we like it. So I think this is where we're going to be, at least for the next little while. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about nutrition today. Um, and about the fact that uh, the grocery stores right now, when we went this last week, my husband and I, we noticed that there was not very much meat on the meat counter. In fact, we, there was no chicken, there was no beef. There were a few sausages, few pre processed foods, which we try to avoid as much as we can. Um, but uh, there wasn't any meat. Thank goodness we had some chicken and, and things left down on the freezer. But I figured, oh, well, well, Monday's coming up. Why don't we try a meatless Monday? We've done this before, um, off and on. But I figure, you know, with all this COVID and trying to avoid going to the grocery store, trying to avoid any contact that we can, I figured, well, let's see what we have in our cupboard and see what we can come up with tonight for a meatless Monday dinner. So what we did come up with, or what I came up with, was a lentil soup, which turned out more of a stew than a soup. Um, let's see if I can do this now without spilling it because I've already spilled it. <laughs> but anyway, it was really good. I think I've tried this recipe before. If you want the recipe, um, I believe McCall is going to have my a email address on the uh, website. So just email me and I'll be glad to share my recipe. It's no, no big deal. It is basically uh, carrots which are good in beta carotene, which is a good nutritional addition to your diet. Onions, which have vitamin C, but there really isn't that much in there. So I don't know if they really give a nutritional benefit, but they taste great. Uh, celery, and to be honest with you, I don't know what the nutritional benefit is of those, except they add flavor too. And uh, I think I used green lentils. Um, I think that's what I had. I usually either buy, buy green or brown, but I think these were green lentils. And so about a couple cups of those and some uh, chicken broth. Actually, the recipe called for veg vegetable broth, but we had chicken broth in our freezer that I had made from some chicken bones um, back in the springtime. And so I used this chicken broth instead. Now, if you use the vegetable broth, this dish would be actually considered a vegan dish, which if you know what vegan means, is means it means that there are no animal products whatsoever in the dish. So if you use the vegetable broth, this is a vegan dish. This is more of a vegetarian kind of dish with the chicken broth, um, although it still does have chicken in it. So it's not really vegetarian, but it is because there's no meat in it. So that's my definition of being a vegetarian or having a vegetarian dish. I am not a vegetarian. So um, we had it for dinner tonight, and it was it was very delicious. Um, like I said, if you want the recipe, just uh, go ahead and email me, and I'll be glad to share it with you. Um, I got it offline, and um, I, I, I'm doing this video post our meeting today, so I forgot to hit record when we were having our meeting. And um, 
if you have any questions at all that you'd like me to answer or anything that's concerning to you about our situation currently with uh, COVID or Corona, or if you have any health questions at all, uh, just let me know. And I'll be glad to answer those back to you um, to the best of my ability. And if I don't know the answer, I try to find out the answer for you. Okay. Thanks so much. Signing off for now. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, I'm Mike Beauvais, physical therapist, and today for Monday Motivation, we talked about ergonomics. I think we've all heard that word a lot, and hopefully we all have some understanding of it. Ergonomics is the study or science of fitting the workplace or the job to the worker as opposed to the other way around. For years, workers were getting injured and wearing themselves out trying to do some of these jobs uh, in industry, uh, you know, manual labor jobs and construction and those kinds of things. So ergonomics is a study or science of trying to improve the, uh, the job or the workplace to fit the worker. And as a physical therapist, I try to emphasize keeping your neutral. So I want you to remember this cute little phrase, maintain the neutral. And by that, I mean, if I take my arm here and I can draw a straight line from my elbow right up to my fingers that puts my wrist joint in what's called neutral. Now, just because my wrist can bend this far this way and that far that way doesn't mean I should use my hand or my wrist in those positions. That's not good for the joints and the um, soft tissues. So try to maintain the neutral with everything that you do, whether it's your wrist joint, your elbow, your shoulder, down your hip, your knee, your ankle, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. So a good example is when you're try <clears throat> trying to rake or shovel or push something, I can do it by standing still and just using my arm as far as it'll go. But remember this cute little phrase also, try to avoid the extremes of movement. Just because my arm can go this far back behind me or this far up over my head doesn't mean I should be using it in these positions. That's going to hurt me and injure me over time. So instead of using just my arm, I'm going to keep my elbow more in a neutral position and I'm going to use my body to go back and forth and that's going to help protect my arm. Same thing if you're going to do things in a squatting or a bent down position, just because I can get all the way down and bend my knees and my hips as far as they go doesn't mean that's good for them or that's the right way to use them. Be better if I could get in some sort of a half kneeling position, get my hip more neutral, take the bend out of my knee and do what I have to do down here without having to squat down. So remember to maintain the neutral and try to avoid the extremes of movement anytime that you are working, uh, positioning yourself, those kinds of things. So remember ergonomics and you all stay safe. Hi everyone, I hope this finds everyone healthy and safe. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about relationships and how to continue to cultivate them and connect with one another. I think when this quarantine began, we were all kind of, okay, we have video, we have electronics, we can do this. Now eight weeks in, I think we're all a little bit tired of this. We've embraced working from home. We've embraced um, video conferencing. And Zoom has become a word in my vocabulary, I know, that was never in my vocabulary before. But now, after this many weeks, we're a little tired of it, and might I say we might be getting on each other's nerves at home. So today I want to talk about building um, our relationships, connecting better in our relationships, because a happier, healthy healthier relationship means that we're actually helping our society um, by building these relationships. So let's get right into it and find out what we really need. Most of the time I hear from people that we, they just want to be supported. They really need support. But what does that really mean? Because I think it means something different for everyone. Most of the time it means listening, active listening, making sure that you give that other person the opportunity to talk and you need to just listen without taking things personally. On the flip side, you need to make sure that you let your spouse or your friend know that you need to be heard as well. And you need to take your turn at being the speaker and having someone else listen to you. Be the first to say you're sorry. 
and really mean it. It's okay to say I messed up. It's okay to step back and ask if we can try again. Most of the time when we do that, we want to offer those gestures and those hugs. So what do we do right now when we can't really offer those gestures and hugs during this time of quarantine? So when we can't do these physical gestures, let's talk about some other strategies. So let me check with my notes here and see what we've got. The first thing I think is really important to do is to greet and say hello to one another. So if you're listening, if you're living with someone else, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your children, make sure that you acknowledge one another in the mornings. Make sure you acknowledge each other before you go to bed. Maybe establish little rituals, have coffee together in the mornings, have a conversation with one another after the children are in bed, or maybe have make a date to have lunch with your teenager even though that might be their breakfast time. But make sure that you acknowledge one another. Try to find something good about your spouse, about your friends. There's a reason that you were friend, became friends in the first place. There's a reason that you got married. So try and remind yourselves of that commonality and connect on that level. In fact, if you have a similar interest or a commonality, the most fun thing to do is even when you're not together, Text each other, take pictures and show one another. Ask each other about those things. You can even watch a concert together, even though you're in two different homes, by texting each other or video calling and saying, hey, what do you think of this part? That can be a lot of fun. Nothing takes the place of, of the physical in-person kind of thing, but we need to try these things. If we're used to contacting our friends maybe once a week by phone or twice a week by phone, we might need to do it a little bit more often during this time since we really can't just get in our car and drive over to one another's homes. Spend time together as a family without technology. Tell yourselves and your family that telephones have no place at the dinner table, that we don't need to watch TV and movies every time it's dinner time. So try and connect at dinner or lunch or breakfast, pick one, but try and have some time without technology. If you have movie night, if you have game night, you can put the technology away and find a good old-fashioned board game. Schedule a weekly check-in with one another. Sync your calendars. Talk about what you want to accomplish in the day. Let each other know your expectations, even if it's with your teenager. But especially when we're talking about our spouses or our partners, we definitely need to check in with one another so that we know what to, to expect. Give your partner space. It's okay to need alone time. In fact, both of you need alone time. So make sure that you don't take it personally if your spouse or your partner or even your children say, I just want to be alone. Most of the time, it's not about us. Most of the time, they just need their time by themselves. That's okay. Help out, lend each other a hand. Do it without being asked. If you're making yourself a sandwich, wouldn't it be great to offer to make a sandwich for someone else in the family? Maybe empty the dishwasher without being told. Offer to make dinner. Any of those things, when we do those things without being asked or when we do them without even being told, it makes that other person in the household feel valued. Send greeting cards. It's wonderful to know that someone else is thinking of us. Those kinds of things are the way we continue to connect. Above all, use humor. There is something funny in almost every situation. You know, it's been said that laughter is the best medicine. And honestly, research says that a good belly laugh actually releases all sorts of wonderful chemicals in our brain and makes us feel less stressed and we go around with a smile on our face. And isn't that make, doesn't that make the world feel a whole lot better? Remember, decide what your own expectations are for your friends, for your spouses, for your family members, and then stand back a minute and assess what you also expect of yourself. I know it's important to step back and do that, but am I living up to my own expectations of myself? Sharing and showing an interest in your family, in your friends, 
trusting, creating quality time, and healthy communication strategies are all wonderful expressions of love. This helps create a wonderful, happy family life. During this time especially, we need one another. Reach out and connect. I know you'll feel better. Everyone take care of yourselves. Friends, thanks again for joining us for another episode of Monday Motivation. I want to thank uh, Janet Broadwell and her husband Mark for joining us for the first time. Janet, again, is a nurse with Beaumont Home Care, and she's going to be joining us these uh, coming Mondays. Um, remember that this Monday um, that's coming next is Memorial Day. I hope that you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend with your family. I encourage you to lift up in remembrance not only those that uh, served and gave their lives for us in the wars, but also those that are serving and taking care of us at the front lines right now. All of our police officers, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, and as those that we often forget, those working in the grocery stores, those that are cleaning up at the hospitals, those that are picking up our garbage, continue to um, just remember those as you're celebrating with your family. And join us for Monday Motivation, not on Memorial Day at 3.30, but the following Monday, June 1st. But remember, on Tuesday, the 26th at 7.30, Parenting Through Pandemic. Parenting Through Pandemic at 7.30 on Tuesday, May 26th with our own Lisa Bouvet and Pastor Kelsey and myself. We'll be joining you to talk about the uh, difficulties and struggles and hopefully give you some tips with um, helping out with parenting during these unprecedented times. God bless you. Stay strong. Stay healthy. Continue to wear those masks and gloves. God bless.